Professor Yamamoto from NTT Research, who was kind enough to uh, actually come to Trieste, and uh, he will uh, give a talk on recent progress in coherent Ising machines. Okay, Professor Yamamoto, please. Recording in progress. Morning again. Uh, do you hear me? Okay. Uh, so uh, let me first thank the organizers uh, for inviting me uh, to this uh, very important uh, meeting. And uh, today I am going to talk about uh, recent topics uh, and the progress in coherent Ising machines. <laughs> Do you hear well? So, so. Or oh. Is there a switch that maybe you yes. have to? Oh, ah. No, it's not muted. Okay. So try again. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah no, it's not Do you important. hear me? <clears throat> not really. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe now is better. I can speak loud. Okay. Sorry. Ah, all right. Hmm, it's freeze. <laughs> uh. All right. Uh, here is the outline of my talk today. Uh, I will start the state of the art uh, coherentizing machines. And then uh, I will describe the principles of two types of coherentizing machines, are uh, optical delay line uh, based and the measurement feedback based uh, CIMs. Uh, then I will describe some benchmark results against uh, quantum computing and quantum inspired algorithm on digital platform. Uh, I will also talk about the uh, uh, energy to solution uh, in all optical CIM. Uh, then I switch the gear a little bit and talk about the fair sampling property uh, of this device for all degenerate ground states and uh, low energy excited states. And if I have a time, uh, I will briefly describe the new machine called the coherent SAT machine uh, using chaotic nonlinear dynamics, then I will conclude. We hear the research on uh, uh, CIM uh, has started uh, around 2010. Uh, so the first proposal are, uh, is actually to use uh, injection locked lasers or Bose-Einstein condensate to represent spins, uh, in this case, classical XY spin model uh, is implemented. Uh, then a few years later, our use of degenerate optical parametric oscillator uh, has been uh, proposed. In this case, a classical uh, Ising spin is implemented uh, on this device. Uh, as for the hardware development, the uh, 2016, 100 spins uh, all to all connected uh, with 10,000 uh, uh, weights. Uh, this machine was demonstrated at Stanford at the same year. Uh, NTT demonstrated a slightly larger machine with 2,000 spins all to all connected uh, with 4 million uh, weights. Uh, as for the prototype, uh, last year NTT announced the uh, 100,000 spins, again, all to all connected with 10 billion weights. And uh, if uh, CIM uh, differential equation, ODE is implemented as a heuristic program, uh, either on FPGA or GPU, uh, we can construct a machine uh, on cyberspace, and this cyber CIM with 
hundred spins with sparse connection was also uh, demonstrated uh, at NTT. There are two OPO coupling schemes uh, employed uh, for those machines. The first type is optical delay line based coherentizing machine. And uh, first of all, the single sort of ring cavity can support any identical and defect free OPO pulses uh, pumped by the model of the laser pulse train uh, in degenerate optical parametric oscillator. And the part of those OPO pulses uh, is extracted by the output coupler and the use of optical delay lines with our EOM modulators, uh, we can introduce uh, dynamically uh, using time division multiplexing technique uh, or to all coupling. This scheme has an advantage of high speed and low energy operation, but the uh, external optical circuit are necessarily very complex. Our, the second type is called measurement feedback uh, based coherentizing machine. And in this case, external uh, optical delay line circuit is replaced by optical homodyne detector, uh, analog to digital converter, FPGA, and digital to analog converter again, and then drive the EOM modulator. Uh, this second scheme has the advantage uh, of all-to-all -all amplitude control coupling can be easily implemented by a single measurement feedback circuit, but of course the speed and energy cost uh, of such an approach is limited by the digital platform. Here is our uh, incomplete list of uh, CIM research groups at present time. Uh, as for the hardware uh, research, a variety of different physical systems such as optical parametric oscillator, uh, second harmonic generator, uh, atomic cavity QED, uh, various laser systems and superconducting circuit uh, under the investigation. Our, the theory of CIM uh, has been developed from the perspective of quantum optics, condensed matter physics, and neuroscience. Uh, there are uh, also uh, various algorithm sort of development uh, based on uh, chaotic search, our uh, continuous time dynamical system, uh, ODE, uh, mixed integer linear programming, and neuro-inspired algorithm. And finally, in application areas, are, uh, several groups have been working on machine learning, uh, compressed sensing, uh, drug discovery, and the communication network uh, areas. So let me start with our, our operational principles of optical delay line-based uh, uh, coherentizing machine. The uh, left top panel shows the degree of uh, entanglement, uh, new minus tilde smaller than one, represent the existence of internal entanglement among OPO pulses in this particular configuration. And as you can see that the necessary and sufficient condition for inseparability is satisfied in the entire pump rate, but the maximum uh, entanglement is formed at the OPO oscillation threshold. The second step uh, of this device is quantum correlation induced corrective symmetry breaking <clears throat> at the threshold. Each OPO has a simple harmonic potential uh, for which the uh, electric field uh, amplitude zero is a stable point, but at the threshold, this uh, harmonic potential is deformed to bistable uh, zero phase, pi phase uh, uh, potential, and the symmetry is broken. Uh, instead of uh, random uh, break, breaking of symmetry at OPO threshold, the device actually correctively breaks the symmetry. Uh, for instance, if OPO1 breaks a symmetry to zero phase, OPO2 actually breaks a symmetry uh, to downspin and so on uh, because of the existence of quantum entanglement. 
right bottom panel shows the success probability for N equals 16 anti-ferromagnetically uh, uh, coupled Ising spin model. And uh, for this case, the success probability of random guess is about 10 to the minus five. And then uh, immediately after a few round trips of OPO pulses, success probability is increased by two orders of magnitude. And this enhancement of the success probability uh, originate from the formation of internal uh, entanglement. Then at the threshold region, uh, corrective symmetry breaking uh, sets in, and one of the two degenerate ground state is selected, and its amplitude is exponentially increased, and the uh, unselected uh, ground state amplitude is exponentially uh, suppressed. And uh, this exponential amplification and deamplification is actually the last step of our CIM uh, uh, search process. This sort of a physics is somehow related to the so-called concept Ein selection, uh, which appears in physics of uh, quantum to classical transition. Uh, it is a typical sort of our, uh, physics uh, often observed in open dissipative quantum system. And uh, as shown in the uh, uh, left bottom uh, figure, the uh, OPO network system is dissipatively coupled to uh, vacuum state reservoirs. And during this uh, dissipative coupling, uh, internal quantum correlation or entanglement formed among OPO pulses. At the same time, uh, external quantum correlation uh, between system and the reservoir is actually formed. And the right bottom panel uh, shows the quantum uncertainty uh, relation uh, for, the, for each OPO pulse. It starts from vacuum state uh, at the beginning of the computation, and then uh, at OPO threshold, uh, maximum entanglement is formed. Uh, between uh, OPO pulses, then uh, at above threshold, uh, those entanglement uh, decreases, and eventually the computation finishes uh, with quasi-coherent state. And this sort of a dynamical sort of a change of internal quantum state uh, is so-called vacuum-induced ion selection, namely the here when system wants to sort of uh, transit to a classical system, uh, it actually must eliminate any quantum correlation between system and the reservoir. And in this way, uh, such a classical system can broadcast uh, its internal state without any disturbance. And this is a definition of classicality or uh, objective reality. And uh, this type of uh, CIM actually indeed uh, uh, features this kind of uh, ion selection. Uh, the next machine, the measurement feedback CIM operational principle is much more subtle. Uh, as shown on the uh, left panel, the uh, incident uh, squeezed the vacuum state uh, into the uh, external beam splitter uh, uh, create uh, internal external quantum correlation, and that induces sort of a, a measurement induced state reduction for the measured state uh, uh, xj. And this sort of a, a positive amplitude measurement result make a, a displacement for the target uh, OPO pulse xi. Uh, and in this way, the two OPO pulses xi and xj are positively correlated in this uh, uh, ferromagnetic coupling case. And so in the end, in this type of uh, second type of uh, uh, CIM uh, actually convert each time uh, uh, internal external quantum correlation into uh, internal uh, classical correlation. Uh, and the right top panel uh, shows the success probability as a function of saturation parameter, G squared. And this saturation parameter is a key parameter for CIM 
it actually decides the classicality and the quantumness uh, of the operation. And with increasing G squared toward one, uh, quantum correlation increases and the machine becomes more quantum mechanical. Uh, as you can see that the uh, exact density operator master equation uh, model uh, is well described by two types of Gaussian quantum model are based on this uh, quantum measurement theory, but not by the classical measurement theory, neglecting the uh, state reduction induced by homodyne measurement. Our, the next uh, concept, chaotic amplitude control, uh, is our most advanced uh, heuristic uh, uh, attached to a measurement feedback uh, CIM. The whole point uh, of this new uh, heuristic is that the uh, normally uh, Ising coupling term is linearly sort of uh, implemented into the machine, uh, which is called linear feedback, or via nonlinear filter, such as tangent hyperbolic function, this is called nonlinear feedback. Both linear feedback, nonlinear feedback, system is gradient descent and often trapped by local minima and can never reach the true ground state. The uh, new uh, operational mode, chaotic amplitude control, introduces the error signal E of I, and this error signal is exponentially increased or exponentially decreased depending on the uh, uh, present time intensity is lower or higher than the target amplitude. And this sort of our, 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 uh, dynamical or exponentially varying our, uh, error signal introduces a correlated sort of noise, uh, injected noise, uh, external noise uh, is in correlated internal state and uh, also introduces asymmetric uh, uh, coupling. And this asymmetric coupling introduces a new sort of a physics into the machine, which is chaotic such. Uh, as you can see on the top panel, the here xi and the xj are program variables and its space, and the e of i the vertical axis is a new sort of a dimension introduced by the uh, error signal. Whenever the, the uh, machine approaches a local uh, minimum or global minimum, a stable point, the machine internally generate error signal E of I and make this sort of a stable point unstable. And therefore the machine can escape our so uh, in this way, uh, you can see that the right bottom panel, the trajectory of uh, amplitude control, uh, CIM, the uh, uh, internal OPO powers are constantly flip its phase uh, forever. Uh, even though it is actually identify global minimum, uh, this uh, stable point is destabilized by the uh, amplitude uh, control feedback so that uh, it permanently explore the new state. And this is in sharp contrast to simple gradient uh, descent. So uh, let me show you a few benchmark uh, results are uh, here. Uh, the first one is coherentizing machine versus uh, quantum computing. And we actually picked up uh, Sherrington Kirkpatrick all to all coupling spin glass model. Our left panel shows the time to solution, the ground state versus program size, square root of program size. And there are two sort of our, uh, quantum computing model are uh, assumes ideal hardware, namely uh, no decoherence, no gate error. Therefore, uh, there is no uh, quantum error correction uh, needed and also all to all qubit coupling are uh, somehow realized. And even such an uh, ideal quantum computing hardware, uh, Grover such and discrete algebraic compu computing such actually features exponential scaling. Uh, why? <coughs> Sorry. Uh, 
カオティックアンプリチュードコントロール CIM、The、Time to Solution actually scales as a square root of problem size and this sort of a scaling difference is traced back to our <coughs> linear am <coughs> amplification in unitary system versus exponential amplitude amplification in dissipative system. Namely, if you look at the right top figure, uh, in the case of Grover Such, we prepare the linear superposition of all candidate states. <coughs> and one step of Grover iteration increase the amplitude of the ground state by one over square root of two to n. Therefore, in order to actually realize 100% uh, success probability or uh, amplitude probability of ground state equal one, we have to repeat square root of two to n times for this global iteration. And that leads to exponential scaling uh, of quantum computing uh, uh, approach. Uh, right bottom panel, we show that the amplitude of the ground state uh, is exponentially increased at the uh, OPO threshold, corrective symmetry breaking point, and this comes from open dissipative nature uh, of this particular device. Uh, second benchmark result are actually are, uh, describe the performance of cyber CIM on CPU versus state-of-the-art uh, digital heuristic, in this case, a breakout local search, uh, one of the best uh, heuristic, which constantly features a uh, uh, best uh, sort of a solution for max cut. Our three panels for program size n equal 100, 200, 500 spins actually demonstrate the general trend. Our cyber CIM is less performant than uh, BLS uh, when the given program instances are easy. But if the program instances are hard, then the cyber CIM is more performant. Namely, with appropriate computation time, it can always uh, report uh, return the correct optimum solutions, while BLS does not. Our last benchmark result is cyber CIM are uh, implemented on GPU versus a uh, discrete simulated bifurcation machine. Uh, this uh, discrete simulated bifurcation machine is uh, very similar to CIM, open dissipative system, uh, digital platform, uh, even though it was originally invented as a superconducting unitary device, but now uh, it is a uh, digital heuristic. And the uh, left bottom panel uh, uh, compared uh, CIM and the discrete simulated bifurcation machine, and the trend is actually similar to the previous slide. When the given program instances are easy, uh, discrete simulated bifurcation machine is faster, but uh, when the program instance is really, really hard, then uh, CIM is actually better to find the solution. Uh, right panel shows our uh, time to solution for sparse graph, a so-called G-set problem uh, from problem size 800 to 2000. And as you can see in the uh, histogram of the right most two panels, the uh, uh, discrete uh, simulated bifurcation machine uh, actually uh, shows the slowest speed uh, and the uh, a chaotic feedback control, which is similar to a previously described chaotic amplitude control, is actually fastest uh, among the uh, solved problems. And the three machines are tested here. Uh, cannot few actually are, are G-set problems, which is shown by uh, black sort of a histogram. Are this is actually the uh, all optical implementation of chaotic amplitude control. As I said, the chaotic amplitude control actually normally implemented in a digital platform uh, consisting of 
ADC, FPGA, uh, DAC, but uh, if we can construct such optical, nonlinear optical uh, circuit, uh, then we can actually uh, uh, implement this uh, uh, algorithm all optically. Uh, and uh, uh, red solid sort of our, our, our device, uh, all thin film lithium niobate, uh, degenerate optical uh, parametric amplifier device, and except a few sort of our, uh, passive elements, uh, all sort of active device are constructed by uh, Tiflin uh, OPA device. And uh, if we employ those approach, as shown on the uh, right bottom panel, uh, energy to solution or two approach, one is cyber CIM on GPU, the other is all optically implemented CIM. The uh, energy to solution is different, three orders of magnitude. So if we multiply time to solution uh, to this result, uh, probably all optical uh, sort of approach uh, enjoys five to six orders of magnitude lower uh, sort of delta E delta T product compared to cyber CIM. <clears throat> Let me uh, change the uh, subject a little bit. Uh, now I would like to talk about fair sampling uh, of degenerate ground states and the low energy excited states. Normally, Ising machine is designed to find any one of the ground states. Uh, one optimum solutions are good enough. But some other applications, such as Boltzmann sampling for machine learning, or structure-based virtual screen screening for drug discovery, uh, or decomposition of large optimization programs into our sub-programs to be solved separately, uh, we need actually to get a reasonable number of optimum and sub-optimum solutions. And as shown on the left bottom panel, adiabatic quantum computation is poorly suited for such application because the uh, final state uh, is connected to the uh, initial ground state uh, in this adiabatic transition so that one particular ground state has an exponential bias over other degenerate ground states or, uh, of course, are uh, uh, excited uh, low energy uh, states. Uh, on the other hand, uh, coherentizing machine, the uh, uh, oscillation property uh, as a function of external pumping uh, into OPA, OPO, uh, is shown on the uh, right panel. And the first bifurcation happens at maximum eigenstate of JIJ matrix. This is not a ground state. And the ground state actually appears are uh, very uh, later uh, pump rate. But all those sort of our, uh, ground state and low energy excited state have more or less similar uh, sort of our, uh, threshold pump rate, uh, gain threshold, so that the stochastic uh, nature of the uh, search process of CIM can actually sample uh, those good solutions with uh, uh, fairly equal probability. And the next slide actually confirms this uh, theoretical prediction. Uh, as you can see uh, from the uh, uh, left bottom panel, uh, here is uh, uh, sort of our, uh, uh, if we perform the uh, uh, single run uh, computation uh, of CIM uh, 1,000 times uh, for particular uh, program instance for which our eight degenerate ground states and the six degenerate first excited state and the four degenerate uh, second excited state exist. And the lower panel shows a histogram are uh, how many times out of 1,000 trials the single run, uh, the uh, 1,000 run actually report those state. And as you can see that the uh, lowest uh, a probability to report particular state is larger than 10%, which means that at most, if we can run 10 times 
uh, uh, CIM, we can exhaust all of those uh, ground state and the first excited state and the second excited states. Single mm -hmm. run can report many sort of a desired states uh, uh, because uh, uh, as I have described already, whenever machine approaches a local minimum uh, or a global minimum, it generates internal error signal and destabilize that state and migrate to the next one. So, uh, right panel uh, shows some surprising result. Normally, the uh, quantum device uh, improves its performance when the uh, system is more closed. In the case of a cavity device, high Q cavity is always preferred uh, compared to low Q cavity. But if I plot the sampling time uh, as a function of cavity Q value or cavity decay time per round trip, you can see that the time to sample uh, decreases monotonically with uh, 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 decreasing the uh, uh, cavity decay time. Uh, and uh, if cavity decay time is one a lower panel, uh, which means that the uh, uh, internal field decays one over E, even after one round trip, it's an extremely, extremely low Q cavity device. But the performance is uh, still improved. And the optimum point, sweet spot, is actually T decay is 0.2. This is a ridiculously low Q cavity device. And that is actually uh, demonstrate the power of external dissipation uh, for some time of computational task. Uh, so let me uh, 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 finish my uh, presentation this morning uh, by introducing uh, a new machine which solves our satisfiability problem or max sat problem uh, with continuous variable. As you know, the uh, K sat problem, uh, for instance, K equals three, three sat problem, that each clause has three program variables, uh, X1 or X5 bar, something like that. And this given program is defined by coefficient Cij. Uh, if Cij is one, it means that a program variable Xi is included, Js close. And if it is minus one, which means that uh, Xi bar is included in the Js close. And if Cij equals zero, then uh, both Xi and Xi bar are not included. So once we uh, introduce a Cij matrix, then we actually uh, sort of uh, define completely the given uh, three sub problems. Then the J's closed state is represented by capital KJ, which is a product of one minus C KJ XK over two. And this is zero if J's close is already closed, and one if J's close is not satisfied. Okay? And uh, we sort of uh, relax the uh, program variable, continuous variables, from discrete to continuous, namely introduce soft spins. Then the SAT program and the max SAT program is uh, uh, respectively defined by our summation uh, kj equals zero or minimize kj. And the next slide shows uh, how to sort of uh, define this machine. The first equation, uh, differential equation, described here each OPO amplitude xi. Last term is an important uh, amplitude error correction feedback term, which is actually uh, the, uh, determined by the uh, light sort of uh, figure. Uh, if xi is included in clause j1, uh, j2, and j3, are uh, the two other variables except xi is coupled to xi through this uh, uh, feedback term fi uh, to sort of uh, satisfy uh, each clause. And the uh, uh, error function E of i is, uh, as I said already, are uh, targeted to uh, stabilize to target intensity. Otherwise, it is exponentially increasing or exponentially decreasing as shown on the right lower panel. 
R, and the left lower panel shows a problem uh, variable amplitude, and you can, as you can see that, they are mostly clamped at either plus one or minus one, or uh, true or false, or, and then uh, uh, features chaotic nonlinear dynamics. And then a uh, benchmark result uh, summarized uh, in this slide. The first are uh, the two top panels uh, actually are compared the two strategies. The first, first strategy is a three sat program is mapped to Ising model, and then the Ising mass uh, program is mod solved by the uh, chaotic amplitude control CIM. And as you can see that those sort of are three sat to Ising mapping strategy is four to five orders of magnitude slower than the, than the direct use of uh, SAT uh, CFC uh, machine. Uh, by the way, uh, two figures, the horizontal axis is our, our number of crows normalized by number of program variables, a uh, so-called alpha parameter, and their uh, program size, capital M. Uh, lower two panels uh, shows the uh, state-of-the-art uh, SAT solver based on continuous variables, uh, CTDS. And as you can see on the uh, left lower panel, uh, CTDS cannot actually find the uh, satisfying solution for alpha equal 4.26. This is a phase transition point and the most uh, difficult uh, uh, point uh, for any solver encounters. Our only SAT CFC can find a satisfying solution for this uh, phase transition point. And then our, at, even at this phase transition point, the uh, uh, SAT CFC uh, features polynomial scaling if the problem size is smaller than 1,000. Uh, if larger, we don't know the answer. So let me conclude uh, my talk. Our, <clears throat> the present day, I think, a physical computing uh, uh, research is somehow a combination of uh, four or more uh, computational concepts. They are either analog computing, optical computing, quantum computing, neuromorphic computing. They are definitely not the mainstream uh, of computing technology. Mainstream is, of course, based on CMOS hardware and application specific. Uh, heuristic. Uh, in the mainstream digital computing, uh, nice thing about this uh, technology is hardware development and algorithm development are completely independent. So uh, uh, each expert group actually uh, worked on that. But the physical computing, it's early stage still. So uh, uh, hardware algorithm code design uh, is indispensable. And uh, are also those sort of a different concept uh, of a novel computing scheme uh, can be nicely combined uh, towards the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Yamamoto, for the beautiful talk with impressive results. So we have time for a few questions from the audience and then maybe from the <clears throat> from the online participants as well <clears throat> uh, thank you for the, the very nice talk uh, I had some questions about the benchmarking results I think it was slide 11 or 12 this is 11 yes this is uh, Yes, 11, uh, actually, I guess it applies to both. But uh, the plot on the left, uh, so are these actual um, runs on, on, an, on a CIM, uh, or, or is it? Um, this is all numerical. The numerical. Are, yes. Are, uh, this is our, uh, the our, our CIM CAC case is implemented on GPU and the uh, global search and uh, discrete adiabatic uh, computing 
is, uh, probably CPU, I don't know the, their, uh, one qubit can actually answer the, uh, what the digital platform. GPU. CPU. Yes. Okay, uh, because the um, Sharkin Kirkpatrick is, is NP hard, so it, it would seem like you have a polynomial solution for an NP hard problem uh, with the, uh, the CIM. Oh, the, are you asking why uh, CIM features a square root uh, exponential for such NP hard problem? Right. We believe this is a finite problem size effect. As you can see, problem size is really small, less than 1,000. And that's why this are. Uh... <clears throat> Other questions? Yeah. Uh, just a couple of slides back, I think, the, on your results for an antiferromagnetic chain. Uh, yes, this one. Uh, I'm wondering about the, the blue versus the green data. Uh, did, did you put a bias on one of the spins, or did you post-select? No, there is no bias. Uh, this is uh, our, our, uh, the purely Ising Hamiltonian with no Zeeman term, our N equals 16 antiferromagnetic uh, spinning, our, but we post-select it. Okay. The uh, one up, down, up, down, uh, one of the two ground state, uh, when it is reported as a final state, okay. then we select it. And if the other one is selected, then we discard it. That's why. Other questions? Questions from the audience, maybe? The audience uh, online also? Thank you for the nice talk. Um, so I was just uh, wondering, where do you see the first application area for this particular compute technology? Is there a specific, you know, time scales or, you know, variable number that would be uh, well matched? Our <clears throat> I think compressed sensing or drug discovery and the communication network, the are uh, present CIM, uh, cyber CIM, particularly uh, on GPU, is actually, I think, uh, ready for uh, practical use. But uh, again, I think we are not really expert on the application area. Uh, so uh, uh, the real market exists or not, I don't know. The, uh, but technically, uh, cyber CIM is ready. But uh, physical CIM in particular, or optical uh, CIM, is actually uh, only sort of idea exist. And uh, hardware development actually takes probably, I think, uh, more than 10 years. I think. <clears throat> okay, I think it's time to move uh, to the next speaker. So let's thank Professor Yamamoto again. Yeah.